Hey, Shay, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Excited to have you. So tell me a little bit about you and what you do. Yeah, my name is Shay Smith. I'm a speaker and leadership coach. I focus on helping specifically female entrepreneurs who find themselves to be accidental leaders. I'm a, a mom of two myself and I've had many changes in careers over the years and have found myself leading different teams. And so I love pouring back into women who need some support in that area. Cool. So how did you become an accidental leader? Yeah. So I actually, my first career was actually TV producing. I was a story producer for competition cooking shows and found myself kind of leading teams in different ways. And then when I transitioned into entrepreneurship, um, quickly found myself um, coaching other people and leading in, in other ways. And I found myself really kind of tugging at that, that title because I hadn't achieved a particular version of success that I thought qualified me as a leader. And really what I have found over you know 10 years of doing this is that our experience really positions us perfectly to lead people, especially who are in the position of where we started in our journey as well. Hmm. Yeah. So what, what makes a leader? What makes a leader is yeah. simply the, all the experiences that you've had up until this point. So if you are someone who is maybe leading a team um, that you might not have been um, thinking that that was going to be part of your story, or maybe it's even in your home, you know, I wanted to be a mom for a long time. Yet once these babies came, I was like, oh my goodness, this life doesn't just happen. It just doesn't fall into place without some sort of guidance. And so really honing your experience and leaning into your strengths is what I think makes the best leader, knowing that we don't have to sharpen every weakness, that we can delegate that out mm -hmm. and really focus on what we're good at so that we can continue on. Because I mean, how often have we been in spots where you are maybe working outside your skill set or outside of your gifting? And yeah. it feels exhausting and it feels like everything takes 10 times longer. But if we stay in our lane of what we're really good at, then that's how we can really um, bring in other people and lead well. Yeah. How did you hone in on your skill set? How did you figure out what that was and then what you needed to delegate? Yeah. Well, I mean, I spent a long time doing stuff that wasn't yes. <laughs> skill set. A long time of God being like, you got to get out of this place. You got to get out of, you know, you got to get back over here. And I really resisted because. For example, you know, being in the entertainment industry um, gave me a lot of uh, fun things, or it seemed like something, a life that other people would want to have, yet it wasn't where I was meant to be. And so to be honest, I rejected it for a long time and everything felt hard and difficult. And I thought that was a part of getting to be successful or getting to certain levels was that it had to be really difficult. When in reality, as soon as I kind of surrendered and really listened to what God was sharing with me, that's kind of how I got it more into where my strength is and where my gifting is. Yeah. So what I, I just wrote down, it doesn't have to be difficult. I think a lot of it times we make it like, we make it so much harder than it needs to be because we're trying to wear all the hats and doing things that are not within our zone. And then it just ends up being a hot mess. Exactly. And it's not to say that life isn't with challenges. Right. But I think there's a little bit of um, pride, at least it was for me in like, staying in the hard because then I was constantly working. Right. And I mean, I ended up getting burned out, but I was fixing it. I was constantly trying to do it myself. And really when I, you know, let go of that and stepped into things that then kind of felt uncomfortable because it was a little bit easier or it felt a little bit more right. Cause then I was yeah. really felt like I was stepping out into what, um, God had for me, which can feel scary sometimes. Yeah. Do you, so I know a lot of people, I know this was me. I found a lot of like my worth in my work and what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Did you have that as yes. well as you were like constantly yes. working and trying to do all the things? Absolutely. I, I did not realize how prideful I was about mm -hmm. how much I was working and especially coming from an industry where, you know, a 12 hour day was pretty standard. You know, you leave before that and people call it a half day, you know? And so just that, that feeling of like, well, I've worked all of these hours. And so I deserve X. Or I, you know, feel good about this when really that has nothing to do with who we are or our identity. And that really was painful to break. So if you're listening to this and you're in that spot, let go now. Just don't do what I did. <laughs> don't hang on to it because it does yeah. have to be broken from us. And the same thing of transitioning into motherhood too, of not having any of this be our identity because there's, there's just mm -hmm. so many um, things that we go through that um, we can't just be attached to the outcome all the time. 
Yeah, because it's really easy to be attached to the outcome and find our identity and work when things are going well. But then when it goes down the crapper, as it will at some point, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I mean, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm a terrible person. Look what happened. I know. OK, so I'm an entrepreneur. So by the, like the statistics, more things that I try will probably fail than the ones that, you know, work out right and, yeah. and have some some version of success. And for the longest time, I thought, man, I don't even know what I'm doing here. You know, none of this seems to be working. Why in the world am I doing any of this? And now looking back, everything led to being in the right position for the right time for the people that I need to serve in these different seasons. And so it's beautiful, but it is, it's wild. Yeah. For sure. So how did you kind of find your identity in entrepreneurship? Yeah. So it really was the looking at what kind of life we wanted to have as a family. Um, I left the entertainment industry in part because my husband works in that as well. And so we would never see each other. And then we had kids and I was like, we can't just never see any of us. Right. And so looking at what kind of lifestyle we wanted to live, which was a little bit more of was focused on being together and having a family first, which is counter to a lot of industries, including what we were working in as well. And so I started there. I found a company that I, I connected with the mission and it was that pretty um, typical story now of that side hustle that turns into something full time. But really what it did was it unearthed this realization and this passion of working with women and really leading them and, and really encouraging them to own their strengths in whatever they choose to do. So whether they were working with that company as just a vehicle to get to something else or, you know, wherever they are in life. And so that has really been exciting. I thought that I couldn't be someone who made a big change. I, I kind of was under the belief that you have one job and you work that for the, your whole life. Yeah. And then you just hope for, you know, a Christmas vacation or something. Um, but really finding entrepreneurship and, and knowing that we can kind of shape the life that we want to live was really exciting to me and has been what we've done ever since. Yeah. What are some of the, the challenges that you faced in leadership? There's not always the right answer. There's a lot of just taking the next best step. And that can be really difficult. I think being in a position of leadership does not mean you have all the answers. It means that you know how to communicate, you know, when to say I messed up or we need to make a change or being the person that can often say, okay, let's try this which is really, really, really fun when it all works out. And it's this great idea. And how did she know that that was going to work? And, oh my gosh, I'm so goodness. I'm so glad we did that. But when it doesn't, it's like, oh, wow, you had us do this. Or, oh, wow, you tried that. And that did not work. Why would you ever think to do that? Because hindsight's 20, 20, right? Uh -huh. And we love to analyze everything, even in our own minds, right? I've had that conversation with myself as well. And so knowing that we have to do the best we can with the information that we do at the time. So whether it is a new trend, on social media or, you know, a system that you're building out, knowing that it's okay to try things and knowing it's okay to not be the one that has to have all the answers, but to be able to um, bring people together is really something I've learned along the way. What, what would you say to somebody who is experiencing like the pressure of leadership? Cause it's not always roses and sunshine. There are definite hard moments. So when you're going through and experiencing that like pressure, what would you say to them? Yeah, absolutely look at the situation and separate what is actually real, what is happening, and what is the story around all of that. I think a lot of times the pressure can come from being trying to experience everything at the same time, what it should have been, what it could have been, but what, what it should be, um, what will everybody will think, what are what is the deadline, how, what's the capacity. You know, if we hold everything at one at one time, that's going to just um, put us in this pressure cooker. There are some things that we need to go through with that pressure, just like if you were putting, you know, meat in a pressure cooker, you know, if you take it out too soon, it's going to be gross, right? But if you let it go through that pressure, it is just that perfect tasting thing, right? And so knowing that there are going to be some challenges that you just have to walk through, and then knowing what's data and what's just, um, what's your actual identity, you know, what things are going on that maybe aren't going well, but it has nothing to do with you look at what the story actually is and what the information actually is. Cause I think, again, we can get into this habit of feeling like it's all us. It's all our fault. Mm -hmm. It's all on us. And while some of that's true, some of it's just circumstantial. Right. And we can't carry that with us. Ooh, carrying like the weight of leadership. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and especially if you have, you know, faith incorporated into your business or your life, you have to delegate that to God every single time. 
we aren't meant to hold all of that yet. That's part of our nature, right? Like we want to kind of carry it. Cause then again, it goes back to that. Like, well, if I'm challenged then I'm, you know, working for this success or it has more to do with me than it does with God. Right. And in the reality, we, we literally cannot hold all of that and we don't have to. Right. And it's, that is tough because then when we give it up, then it feels like it's out of our control. Right. And then maybe it was never in our control to begin with, but to incorporate your faith into that element of it is going to save you a lot of stress and a lot of gray hairs. Yeah. Um, let's talk about faith in business. How do you incorporate your faith into your business or how has your faith helped you grow your business? Yeah, I think in those times where, again, often I, we learn from <laughs> our mistakes instead of not, um, you know, putting it more focus on me has been a, a downfall or I feel like has stunted my growth in a lot of ways um, because then I needed to learn really how to dis- disconnect my, my work and my identity. The more I've leaned into my faith, the more I've depended on the Lord, the more I have looked at the abundance that he is, Mm. has made all the difference because then it's harder to hold limiting beliefs. It's harder to hold pride. It's harder to hold my worth in the outcome. Right. Mm. And the reality is if, you know, we go with this understanding of what I think our shared faith is, is that it was never my doing in the first place of Mm -hmm. getting every single person to, you know, come onto my team or to be a client or what, whatever it is. And so the more I'm in that posture, I wouldn't say the easier it is because business is challenging. You know, it just depends on the day, right? Right. But the less um, panicked I am, there's less fear. There's all of the stuff that we know is in in alignment with that. And so the more I've stayed in that, um, the more I've been open to unexpected fruit and unexpected growth and growth that's counter to industries and more blessings in a very real sense yet it didn't look like how I would have planned it. Hmm. Yeah. I love that. Um, what would you say is one of your biggest failures or mistakes in leadership? I think one of the biggest mistakes I made early on was trying to lead people in a way that just duplicated myself. And I know a lot of times in business, especially if you're you know building a team, we often talk about, oh, I just want another me, you know, because I basically, cause I know me and I know the success that I want and how hard I'll work, but everybody's different. Everybody's wired differently. And so teaching women in ways that play to their strengths is a little bit more challenging because it takes a little bit more work. It takes, um, slowing down, which I wasn't good at very much at the beginning, um, really paying attention to how they would operate and so that they can shine. And really that's been my favorite thing is getting people in a position where they, when will, they will thrive and hopefully be bigger and better than I will ever be. And that takes a little bit of a different, um, like I said, pace. And I, for so long, tried to get people to do things how I did it and it wasn't working for them. It didn't bring joy into their life or their business. And so of course they were, you know, quitting. And so that's not good for anybody. Right. And so I wish I would have learned that a little bit sooner. Yeah. Um, talk to me about your staircase method. Oh my goodness. I love talking about this because I love talking about celebrating wins. I think as women and especially in women in business, we don't celebrate wins in our business and our life enough. Um, yet I think it is something that really creates momentum to bigger and better success. And best part is it also keeps you in business. So I call it the staircase method. Just if you picture a staircase, um, with these little steps along the way, celebrating a win, whether it's daily or weekly or monthly, take some sort of opportunity, set a reminder in your phone, whatever you need to do to celebrate one thing that went well or that you did within the last week and celebrate it. It can be your special cup of coffee or whatever you like to drink. Um, Maybe it is, you know, a purchase of something. Maybe it's just going out to lunch with a friend, whatever it's going to train your brain to say this day is different. And there's something else that happened. Maybe it's a a fun, I don't know. I have a friend that does like fun, different stamps on the calendar. So she can kind of look at, see, um, you know, where fun things have happened in her life. This can be a big win. Like you got to, you signed a new client, you signed a book deal, whatever it is. It can also be, Hey, I made that phone call to my phone company to try to negotiate my bill. And I stayed on for two hours to get the answer that I wanted, whatever it is. There's, we do a lot of hard things in our lives. And if we just continue every day to just pass over them, and only remember the hard things or the things that aren't going well, it's going to be Mm -hmm. so discouraging. And again, we carry this burden with us a lot further than we need to do. So take these little steps up and up and up. 
And then that will help you build your momentum. And then if we kind of think of these huge, big goals that we have in, in life and business, often, you know, we think of this big, you know, picture of a big mountain that we're trying to climb. Now, if you take that staircase and just wrap it around the mountain, you will be able to start to see that you are making progress up that mountain. It's going to feel a lot more doable. And so that's where I kind of combine this idea of celebrations with success. Um, because if, especially if you are, you know, getting bigger in your business, you know, your goals get bigger every time you reach one, right? That's mm -hmm. um, what often happens. And then it feels like we can't celebrate because, oh, now we have this goal that's twice as big. Yet, mm -hmm. as you were going around this mountain, if your perspective starts to look the same, it feels like I haven't moved the needle very much. Even if you wrapped yourself around that mountain one time, your perspective might seem the same, but you are higher than you were the time before, right? Yeah. And so it's just this fun, easy way to remember to stop and celebrate and to give yourself some credit for the things you're doing, you know, and really, really um, make a, a marked difference so that you know that you can do it. You can keep going. Yeah. I love that. I think a lot of times, especially us, like a type goal oriented people, we hit the goal and then we're like next, next, and we yep. never actually stop to celebrate it. So I think it's so important that we are really intentional about doing that because otherwise it's like you lose the joy in what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then it can feel like, you know, you're just focusing on the negatives because that's just our brain, right? Totally. Um, that we see all the things, all the gaps and whatnot. And, or you come up to a new, maybe a new opportunity or a new chance for a, a bigger and better goal and think I can't do that or nothing's working. But if you turn around and look back at all of the stairs that you've climbed so far and the evidence is there, I have yeah. done things, things have worked. Maybe I didn't land this big deal or this big client, but I have asked, somebody has purchased this product. Somebody has, you know, signed as a, a coaching client, whatever it is. And then that will fuel you to again, you know, tackle those bigger things. I love that. Um, looking for the evidence of like what's already worked. So for our, our listeners, this is a homework assignment for you. I want you to make a list of all the things that you have accomplished or that have worked well, or just things about you that make you a rock star. Um, I've had my students do this. I'm like, make a list of 50 things of like, I'm a rock star because, and it could be things you've accomplished, things you've done, or just like who you are as a human, you know, of like who you are in God and make that list. And then when you look at it, when things go into the crapper, cause they do sometimes, or you're having like a really bad day or like a, a troubling client or something like that, you can look at it and be like, oh, I am a rock star. I'm pretty cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And I hope, and I would imagine that you have them actually write the 50 things. Like don't stop yes. at 30 because it absolutely, you have 50 things. It's not ask exactly. your best friend, ask us. Oh my gosh. I will tell you amazing things about yourself. Yep. Um, that I love that assignment. Please do it. I need to go do that as well. I think, especially if you also have, um, the, the job title is mom too. It's, it's, it can so quickly feel like nothing works. I'm terrible at everything. And I really right? don't know what I'm doing because you're just pouring out all the time. You're not going to see the fruits of that labor maybe for a while. Right. And so yeah. it's kind of that doubling down. So I absolutely love that. And that is, I think, as you said that I even started to go into my default, like, well, it, it, I don't know, it, you know, just all of the little impossible yep. thoughts that creep in. If you think it's too easy or everybody has that skill, I almost guarantee you that is one of your unique gifts. Yep. If it feels that, if it feels so simple and so like, oh, everybody can do this, most likely that is so your sweet spot and other people don't have that. Yep. So true. All right. What's one of the best books you've read? Oh my goodness. Atomic Habits was okay. absolutely one of the best. I know by James Clear that is um, being passed around and the most powerful woman in the room. Ooh. I, the author's name is escaping me, but it's so interesting. Um, oh my goodness. What is her name? I apologize. I'll have to send it to you after the fact. Um, but she was an auctioneer and just her story and, um, just was so interesting about how to really command a room, whatever that room looks like. Mm -hmm. And then the last one would be why we gather. It was so interesting about how to bring people together, whether you're hosting like an intimate dinner party or a huge big ball or something. And again, as business owners, I think there's so many times that we try to bring people together, even if you're connecting people on social media. Um, it was really, really fascinating. So those are my top ones. Ooh, those are new ones. I've heard Atomic Habits, but the other two I have not. So I'll make sure to add that mm -hmm. to the show notes. Yeah. Um, what does it mean to you to make an impact? For me to make an impact is just really, I think going back to helping women get in a position where they thrive. I think so often it's easy to hide. It's easy to, 
to downplay our, our strengths and to help women really get into a spot where they're owning that, or at least encouraged to take that next best step in that area, whatever their, their sweet spot is, is what's going to make an impact because then that ripple effect goes to the communities that they're serving. And so if I can help women just kind of get rid of the nonsense and the noise that is preventing them from starting, that's my job because they've got a whole impact that they get to make. And so that's the joy that I find in my work. I love that. Where can we connect with you? So I'm on Instagram at the Shea Smith, Shea like Shea Butter, S-H-E-A. I'm also thesheasmith.com. Those are the places I hang out and I would absolutely love to connect with all of you. Cool. Thank you, Shay, so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel and Gome. Today, I have brought on Shay Smith. And we're talking all about how to own your leadership. So since 2014, Shay Smith has empowered hundreds of women to own their leadership role by providing the tools that allow them to step into their authority in a way that feels natural to them. Through educational programs, she equips female entrepreneurs with the tools and strategies necessary to confidently step into their role as a leader in life and business so they can create greater impact within their businesses without it taking over their lives. So as you can imagine, we're talking leadership today, which is so necessary in uh, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, we need leadership. Uh, before we dive into the episode, if you have not left a review of the show, please go do that in iTunes. You can go and leave a five-star review, take a screenshot of it, email it to us, clientcare at rachelandgome.com. And I have a gift for you as a way to say thank you. And if you love the show, share it with a friend and let's dive in.